What's up everybody, my name is Kason and welcome back to another Pokemon Draft League video and today is going to be week 4 of season 10 of the IBL and we are taking on none other than Nova Blader, coach of the Bermuda Kecleons. And a little bit of history, just so you guys know who Nova is. He was also in the PUDL, which is the first league that I ever participated in for Pokemon Draft League. However, he was in the Ultra Ball Division instead of the Master Ball Division. Thing is, he ended up making the Grand Finals of that league and has now been promoted to the Master Ball League. So this is a fantastic player. I know he's a part of multiple leagues, a really, really good battler. And his record might be 1-2, and two, currently saying he's in 10th. But I am not going to underestimate him because he is an absolute beast and he's also a terrific human. Absolutely awesome person. He watches a lot of my videos. I watch a lot of his videos. Just a really cool guy in general. So I'm really looking forward to this battle. I will say he's got a pretty tough team though. So let's take a look at the matchup and see who can put in some work here. Now, first of all, the... Uh, Glaringly obvious Pokemon on the other side is the Cinderace. This was his first overall pick at 119 base speed. It outspeeds most of our team and it actually has the ability Libero, which is essentially the same as Protean for uh, what used to be our Greninja in the other league. So if you guys know what that ability does, basically Cinderace gets the exact same thing. It is a mono fire type uh, Pokemon, but it gets access to a bunch of really amazing uh, different tools for attacks such as Sucker Punch, Pyro Ball, U-Turn. Uh, it can bulk up in front of your face really, really well. And it also gets access to the move Court Change, which is really, really good because um, basically what it does is it flips the sides of the field in terms of hazards, which means if I put up something like Spikes on the other side of the field and he clicks Court Change, now it's on my side of the field instead. So that is definitely something I have to watch out for. The Mimikyu is also a bit of a problem because of its ability Disguise. Essentially gives it basically one uh, free hit where... Uh, it basically takes like 10% of its HP and damage on that first hit. And the fact that it's Ghost Fairy type is a bit of a problem for me, honestly. It gets priority in Shadow Sneak, making it very, very fast. The Fairy type makes it so that my Noivern and Dragapult cannot do any sort of Dragon type damage to it. Um, it's a very scary Pokemon. It can set up Swords Dance. It can also go for something like Trick Room, which is huge because he has that Glass Rear on the other side. And he even has Slow King Galarian who can set up Trick Room too. So a lot of different things that I need to look out for on the other team. Um, and the last Pokemon that I'm really concerned about is that Galarian Zapdos. Now, this is just because he can be a really fantastic Choice Scarf user. There are very few Pokemon who want to take a Choice Scarf or especially Choice Banded Brave Bird or close combat from that thing. So those are definitely the Pokemon that I am looking out for this week. But without further ado, guys, let's jump into the team and see what I decided to bring to combat that. First and foremost, this week, he's got a lot of good physical attackers on the other side, especially just because of that Glass Rear on the other team. I knew that it was very important that I bring the Mr. Aloha, AKA Incineroar, who honestly, even though he hasn't picked up any kills, has been pretty much a co-MVP for the last two weeks. He has been incredibly useful and I expect him to be that again this week. We are running the obviously Intimidate ability along with the Choppleberry. Now what Choppleberry does is it makes it so that when we take a super effective fighting type attack from the other side, it takes that damage and cuts it in half. This is mainly here for the Galarian Zapdos, but it also can pay dividends if that Glass Rear on the other side is running something like a close combat, we would soak up that damage and now all of a sudden it's minus one defense and we could be in a really good spot. We are running a 168 EV spread into defense, 88 into attack, and 252 in HP. So obviously our main role here is to mitigate that physical damage on the other side and we do have a bit of attack investment so that we can do damage as well. We have Knock Off to get rid of items, Drain Punch to give us a little bit of sustain so that whenever we hit something we can try and heal back a bit. U-Turn is here for momentum so that we could go ahead and switch out. I do think there's a decent chance that he runs clear amulet on something on the other side. Because I've been running parting shot a lot on my Incineroar, um, I don't want to get caught off guard by that. Just so you guys know, the item clear amulet makes it so that you cannot take any sort of stat drops from opposing Pokemon. And the way that works with the move parting shot is that if you're wearing clear, clear amulet and I click parting shot, I literally don't get to switch out. I just get stuck there, which is really bad. So we're running U-Turn here instead. It does get a little bit more chip damage onto the other side and allows us to pivot out. And last but not least, we are running Will-O-Wisp. Now there's a lot of Pokemon on the other side that I would like to burn. Could be the Glastrier, could be that Galarian Zapdos, like I said. Overall, I think this set can do a lot of work into his team. However, even though he has a lot of physical threats, he also 
also has a ton of special threats, and that is what Meeple the Umbreon is here to do this week. This thing is very one-dimensional in this battle, with this build specifically. It is meant to come here and stop these special attackers. It is a massive 394 HP and 394 special defense. Those stats are ridiculous. And the moves are Snarl, Moonlight, Yawn, and Baton Pass. Basically what this thing is meant to come in and do is face the special attacker. It has Moonlight to heal itself up, Snarl to lower the special attack on the other side, Yawn to put things to sleep, and Baton Pass to switch out. We have that ability in Synchronize so that if somebody does go for something like a Thunder Wave or a Will-O-Wisp into our Umbreon, that opposing Pokemon who does it to us will always also get that status effect. So if somebody does try and stop this pesky uh, Pokemon by statusing it, they are also going to get that status back. We are also running the item Roselli Berry, so very similar to how we are running the Chapel Berry on the Incineroar. This is here to mitigate the damage of a super effective fairy type attack. Now he does have one fairy Pokemon on the other side with the Mimikyu. However, he has three Terra Captains and all three Terra Captains have Terra Fairy on them. So I think there's a good chance that we could utilize that Roselli Berry into one of those fairy Pokemon. And ultimately, like I said, this thing is very one dimensional. If he bring, doesn't bring a lot of special attackers, this might not have great value, but if he does have that, this thing can wall them insanely hard. The third Pokemon we're bringing this week is our second new Pokemon that we added to the roster this week. I didn't mention this yet. We added Umbreon to the roster after week three. We also added this, Kells, AKA Noivern this week. We're running Terra Steel. Ultimately, I don't think I'm going to Terra this thing, but just in case, I have to defensively we are running the Terra Steel as it does function really well into fairy type mons on the other side. We are running a very bulky support style this week though instead of an offensive one and this is one of the reasons that I love this Pokemon. Now, a lot of people look at this thing and just think of it as a fast attacker but not so fast. It can do a lot of other things. 252 investment into HP, 216 into physical defense, and 40 into speed makes us so that we outspeed the vast majority of his team. We are running the ability Frisk, and we are running the item Heavy Duty Boots. Now, Frisk is fantastic because it allows us to find out what the opposing Pokemon on the other side is running as an item. This is most likely going to be my designated lead. I'm probably going to lead this thing just in case that he tries to catch me off guard with a Choice Scarfer or some weird set. I at least can start the battle without, uh, you know, being on the uh, bad side of things. It basically doesn't allows me to not get caught off guard by anything and make sure that the battle goes according to plan. We are running Super Fang this week. He does have that ghost type Mimikyu on the other team, but basically anything else on the roster, the Super Fang will hit and it will do 50% of their current HP and damage. This can be really, really useful against some of the bulkier Pokemon on his team, such as the Galarian Slowking or the Glastrier and Pokemon like that. It can be really, really, uh, a really safe move to click, essentially, because like I said, the only thing that wants to take that is the Mimikyu on the other other team. U-Turn is here for momentum, obviously, to pivot ourselves out. Taunt is here because we are leading this thing. Like I said, I don't want him to go for something uh, really, really spicy, like a Trick Room setup or a Chili Reception setup with the Galarian Slow King on turn one. By leading this thing, we will find out what item they are. And if they are something like a mental herb that gets rid of taunt, at least I know that on turn one before I try and taunt that thing and get caught off guard. This thing, like I said, is not here really to deal damage. It's here to come in, soak a hit, maybe super fang something, taunt something that wants to set up, and ultimately get into something else. And one of those something else's is the Jesus LBL, aka Dragapult. This week we are running the Infiltrator ability, which means screens don't mean anything to us, and we are running a choice band set. This is not something I have run at all this season, but I'm excited for it. We are running 204 speed, 252 attack with an adamant nature, and 52 into HP. This makes it so that we outspeed literally everything on the other team. We do have to watch out for the Libero Sucker Punch coming out from the Cinderace, but that is why we are running the move Sucker Punch as well. Now, for the people who don't know this, what the move Sucker Punch does is it is essentially a priority attack. It will go first and deal damage to the opposing Pokemon. It's a dark type attack, so it would hit our Dragapult super effectively. The thing is, Sucker Punch fails if it does not go first and if the opposing Pokemon does not click an attack. So if that opposing Pokemon is trying to click Sucker Punch into something and the opposing Pokemon just clicks like Reflect or Thunder Wave or something like that, it fails. But it also fails if we're faster and we use the same move. Because we're gonna be faster than that Cinderace, 
if we click Sucker Punch, his Sucker Punch fails, which means even though we won't deal that much damage to it, at least it can't hurt us. We might at least be able to like make him think in that situation that he might not click that move. And maybe we can switch into a U-turn, deal some damage, and then switch back out. Ultimately though, what we are really trying to click on this Pokemon is Dragon Darts because it hits most of his team really damn hard. And we are trying to click Phantom Force, which is really here for that Mimikyu. Dragon Darts hits most of his team pretty well, except for that Mimikyu Phantom force does hit it super effectively however another physical threat we are bringing this week though is the kayuma the quack of all i really want to try and pop off with this guy and you're going to see a theme this week we are running three different pokemon with berries that mitigate super effective uh, certain types of damage. We are running the Koba Berry. Now the Koba Berry is here to mitigate super effective flying type attack damage. And now basically what this set is, is it has Moxie so that if we claim a kill, we get a plus one boost to our attack. With 252 in attack and adamant nature and just enough speed investment, after we cl click Aqua Step, we will be outspeeding everything on the entire team. Now the Koba Berry is here because I expect if I bring in my Quackleball, he will probably bring in the Galarian Zapdos. He is going to want to click Brave Bird or some type of flying attack to take us out in one hit. The Koba Berry is going to allow us to live that hit, still have some HP left, we're going to be able to outspeed after clicking Aqua Step, and now all of a sudden with a Moxie boost, we could easily just start going crazy into his lineup. So we have Aqua Step, Close Combat, Aqua Jet for priority, especially if we get that speed boost and the Cinderace on the other side is trying to click Sucker Punch to outrace us. Not so fast. If we are faster and click Aqua Jet, that Sucker Punch is going to fail. Ultimately, it will also fail if we click the move Swords Dance, which is here to boost our attack up. Ultimately, if Kayuma is allowed a turn or two to set up, I think it very easily could run through his team, and that is what I'm hoping to do this week. But if he can't do it, I'm going to turn to the Pokemon that did it for me the last two weeks, and that is Greatestness, aka Iron Thorns. This bad boy has claimed nine kills over the last two weeks, is currently tied for the league lead in kills, and has only came to two battles. The one other Pokemon that has nine has come to all three up to this point. So this guy has been a monster, and we are running a fairly similar set in terms of spread and item as last week. However, the moves are different. We're running 72 in HP, 252 into attack, with 184 in speed with a Jolly Nature. Very similar to Quackleball, this makes us just fast enough that after a plus one speed boost, we will outspeed the entire enemy roster. With the item loaded dice, this makes it so our Rock Blast is always going to hit four to five times against the enemy. And Rock Blast is really good because honestly, he just doesn't have that many rock resistances on his team. It's also fantastic because of that Mimikyu on the other side. Like I said, that ability disguise that can be really, really pesky. Rock Blast, if the first hit hits Mimikyu, it will pop the Disguise, and the rest of the hits will take out the Mimikyu before it can really do anything. So ultimately, between Rock Blast and Earthquake, there really aren't any other attacks that I need to use this week, so those are really the only two attacking moves I have. I have Stealth Rock here if I need to set up hazards against somebody, and ultimately Dragon Dance is here to basically boost ourselves up. I'm running Terra Electric here just mainly for defensive purposes. I debated between this and Terra Fairy, but ultimately decided that Terra Electric was the best way to go for the defensive side of Greatestness. So guys, that is the roster for this week. I'm excited to hop into the battle. Nova's an amazing player, um, and I'm really excited to see what he has brought this week. So without further ado, let's jump into the battle. All right, guys, so we are loaded in here versus Nova and the Bermuda Kecleons, hoping to keep the momentum going. Uh, we've won the last two weeks 5-0, really hoping to catch a third one. It would put us in really terrific position for the future here. Looking at the roster he brought, okay, so Cinere, Sarud, uh, Glastrier, Crocolore, um, Galarian Zapdos, and Mimikyu. He didn't bring the Galarian Slowking. Um, the Crocolore is interesting. Um, I did not expect that. That's like a two-point Mon. However, what do I want to lead here? I think I want to just lead the, um, I think I want to lead Kells. That was my original plan, and... That way, if he does lead something like a Choice Scarf Zapdo Zapdos, at least we can sniff that out. But yeah, I think, um, I mean, Greatestness looks really good in this matchup. So I'm going to lead Kells here. And then really the big thing is I need to try and get rid of the Mimikyu. If I can do that, then Choice Band Dragon Darts from uh, Jesus just goes absolutely nuts into his team as well. There's probably a good chance that he's going to tear a fairy on something, though. Um, so I do have to keep that in mind, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. So good luck to Nova. Um, I know he's a great player. He's really searching for a win right now. So we'll see. So he leads a rude. Um, this is a decent start for me. 
and he's choice scarf. Okay, so this is why I wanted to lead this for Frisk. So do I want to lose my heavy duty boots on this thing? So I don't really want to reveal what my set is on Noivern here. I kind of want to click U-turn though, because it's going to do a lot of damage. Yeah, I'm just going to go for it. So he, he goes knockoff. So he gets rid of our boots, which is fine. Honestly, this thing is really just here for support anyway. This should do a good chunk. Yeah, it does half the health because it's super effective. So we're going to pivot out. And I think we can go into Quackaball here. This seems weird into a grass type mon, but he's locked into knockoff. And we might be able to get either a sword stance or an aqua step up here for free. So I feel like that's a good move to go for. Um, I could go Mr. Aloha as a safe switch in, but honestly, I don't know how many more times I'm going to get a free setup with Quackaball. Yeah, so I'm going to go Kayuma here. If he stays in and clicks knockoff, it's not going to do much damage. We'll lose our Koba Berry, but I don't really care about that that much. I think I just click Aqua Step because we should outspeed everything on his team after I do this. It's not going to do that much damage, um, but it should... It should make us pretty damn fast. If he stays in, it's really not that big a deal. Like I said, he's not going to do much damage to us. And he can't click a grass type move, so... My thought is he probably switches here, but if he does just knock off an item, it's really not that bad. Yeah, so we're going to go Aqua Step. So he decides to stay in. He just goes for knockoff. Okay, he does about 100. It'll, it'll do less if he does it again. Aqua Step's going to give her a plus one speed boost, though. So it does a little chunk. Um, I don't know... Does a plus two kill? A plus two should kill. So now I kind of want to Swords Dance here. We're already plus one speed. I think I just Swords Dance here for free. Because if he goes for knockoff, it's going to do about 60-ish. 60 60-ish damage. And this feels greedy to set up right now. But like, honestly, I don't know how many more good opportunities I'm going to get to do this. I could click Coast Combat for the kill, but I don't want to. This guy just keeps staying in. Why is he staying in for this knockoff? I guess he just doesn't care about this thing. He's just like letting me set up for free. Um... Now we just Aqua Step, I think. Plus two, plus two Aqua Step should kill from this range. Oh, he's doing this because he's going to bring in Crocolor next. Crocolor is unaware. Oh, I feel really stupid right now. Yeah, he's going to knock off and we're chunked. Oh, man. I didn't even think about the fact that Crocolor is unaware. This should clean up the kill. Man, that's a that's a tragedy. Um, I feel really silly. Okay, so Kayuma's going to claim a kill. We're plus two speed, plus two attack, which normally would feel like... Well, now we're plus three attack. Normally in this situation, I would think we literally could just win the game right now. I don't know who he is. I'm assuming this is Crocolor. Yeah, dude, I feel so silly. This thing is unaware, which means it ignores our stat boosts. Oh, I feel so dumb. What Terras does this thing guy get? I feel really silly for not even thinking about this Crocolor. This two-point mon is, is literally the reason that I can't just win the game right now or something close. I'm just going to close combat. The thing is, it can go Terra Grass or it can go Terra Fairy. Terra Grass would ignore our water. Terra Fairy would ignore fighting. So we'll see which one he goes for, but close combat is more damage in general, so we'll see which one he picks. It is Terra Fairy, which is a shame, which means close combat's not going to do much. He probably just takes me out with a Terra Blast, um, but at least we get him to reveal his Terra early, which is good. So close combat, yeah, that is definitely unaware. <laughs> oh, that's a shame, man. That is a shame. Does he go, does he go for Terra Blast? Yes, he does. Okay. So Kayuma's going to fall. I feel really silly now. Um, completely missing on that unaware but it's one to one to 5v5 and we at least got him to terra and he's a little chunked so honestly like it could be worse our noivern is chunked too though i could go into noivern right now and like just like terra steal super fang but this meeful is here to beat the special attackers so that's kind of what its job is i probably should just do that i don't really want to terra steal kells because i'd like to save the terra for greatestness because terra electric makes it so that the fighting type attacks from um zapdos don't hit us for very much we're just gonna go meeple here this thing should completely wall this crocolore i think i just go for a yawn here because if he switches the thing is the thing that comes in is going to be pressured to switch back out um, because Yawn makes it so that the next turn, like after the next turn, the Pokemon will fall asleep. So I think he probably swaps here. I don't imagine that he's going to gonna want to stay in. I guess he could just go for Slack Off to heal to full, I suppose. Um, he doesn't know what kind of set I am, but there's no way this thing can do any damage to me, though. Especially with the Roselli Berry. There's just nothing he can really pressure me with. Because this thing is a wall. It's hard to get rid of, but it doesn't really do much damage. Yeah, so he's going to swap it out. I'm curious to see what he goes for here. Okay, Apollo is the Glaring Zapdos. So Yawn's gonna come out. 
so it gets drowsy. So it should fall asleep after the next turn, but I can't stay in. Now the thing is, do I predict him to switch out? Is the question, right? I think this thing probably wants to close combat, but it's a little risky because I have Jesus here. I could just go into Jesus predicting the close combat. I feel like this guy probably goes for a brave bird, right? Predicting. I think he goes for a brave bird. I think I want to just bring in Mr. Aloha here. Honestly, actually, if anything, this pro thing probably goes for U-turn. This thing's probably going to switch out because he's going to fall asleep the next turn. So if he has U-turn, I think he probably goes for it. So with that situation, I think I go into Incineroar here to at least um, lower its attack stat before it goes for U-turn. So Aloha comes in. We get the Intimidate. So it's not clear amulet, which is good. Oh my god. I'm an idiot. This thing gets defiant. Why did I not know that? Oh no. Well, thank god he went for U-turn. We might have just got smoked by close combat. Shit, dude. I'm so stupid. How, how did I not know that? Man, this is two huge mistakes I've made already. Not even thinking about the unaware Crocolore and the fact that he gets defiant. So every time I lower his stat, he gets plus two attack boost. So instead of intimidating working in my favor, it actually just gives him an attack boost. Oh, man. I can't believe I missed that. I honestly wouldn't have even brought Incineroar this week if I had realized that. Oh, gosh. That's a huge mistake. Is that a problem? Probably. Because I don't think our Choppleberry will save us at plus one. I need to I need to calc that. Yeah, dude. Because of that, if we switch in, even with Choppleberry, we'll die from this range from a close combat. Plus Ram 9. Oh my god, I need to message him. I need to message him. Dude, Nova's so funny, man. He watches my videos and he knows my glass drew was named Ram 9 in Puddle. That's so great. I'm just gonna Will-O-Wisp this thing, though. Um, so Incineroar might not be a great answer to the Galarian Zapdos, but it should still be an answer to this. And in case this thing goes for close combat, I get the Wisp off. And if he tries to go for close combat, Chapelberry will kick in. So we'll see if this guy's Lumberry. Tell me he's not Lumberry. He's not. Okay, and he goes for the CC, so at least the Choppleberry is not uh, for nothing. We only take 70 damage there. That's huge. So this guy is now burned and minus one defense. This Glastrier is super weak compared to what he could be, which is fantastic. So this thing is a massive threat. I feel like we've already kind of taken care of this thing at least. So that's a positive. I'm sorry to do this to you, Ram9. Sorry to do this to you, buddy. I think I kind of just want to go for a Drain Punch to just like soak some hits or soak some HP. If it goes for another CC, right on. But Drain Punch should do a ton, especially because it's minus one attack. We'll see what he switches in. If he if he goes for something else, we at least will heal some HP back. And maybe get up to a point where our HP is high enough that we can soak a close combat from Zapdos. Though I don't think that's... We, we would only... Actually, no, we don't even have Choppleberry anymore, so it won't matter. Regardless, I think Drain Punch is the play. I could just go for Knockoff. Maybe that was the play. Maybe... No, dude, if he goes Crocolor and I didn't click Knockoff, I'm going to feel really stupid. Because he's got probably the Evil Light. Apollo is the Zapdos, though. That makes sense. So Drain Punch isn't going to do much. Just a tiny bit. We do heal back. Um. Now the question is, like, do I switch out? Or do I just sack this thing? Because this thing is not nearly as useful anymore. We already burned the Glass Drew, which So that thing is dealt with mostly. But this Zapdos is a problem. And Incineroar does not answer it at all. Like I had planned it did. My prep... Uh, was not good enough this week. All right, how do I deal with this? Is this guy, does he Brave Bird or does he close combat? I don't think he U-turns this time. I think he's just gonna straight attack, but this is such a risk. Like close combat just crushes either Meeple or Greatestness. Brave Bird does work in a Dragapult. I think I'm just going to Kells here. I don't, I think we live a Brave Bird, I think. I don't know for sure. We definitely live a close combat and at least we could like super fang back and do a bunch of damage. That's my hope. I, I'm hoping to see close combat. That's what I would like to see. Oh, it's a Lumberry. Oh, dude, I can't even burn it. Oh, man. This thing is a problem. Brave Bird comes out. We live, which means it takes recoil, which is good. Um, This thing being Lumberry is a problem, though. That means I can't put it to sleep or burn it unless I do it twice. Well done, Nova. Dude, your prep is on point this week. I don't think this guy's going to stay in here because he's probably predicting like a hurricane or something. So I think he's going to swap. I think I just go Super Fang and try and chunk something. He does swap. Okay, so something is taking a ton of damage. It's Ram 9. Okay. Normally, I'd be really excited about this, but the fact that this thing is burnt means it's not nearly as useful, but that's a lot of damage on a bulky Pokemon. With the burn, that's actually pretty huge here. Although I could taunt. Maybe I taunt. Yeah, I'm going to taunt. Because I don't want to... Okay, the only way that this thing is a problem is if it clicks rest. So I'm just going to taunt it and guarantee. This thing probably just kills us with an attack. 
But that's the only way to stop this thing from being a problem. Okay, it avalanches. That's fine. The problem is if I U-turn and switch into something else, Avalanche would have actually done a decent amount of damage anyway. He does get the plus one boost, but with the burn, it's still like he has less than normal attack. And now he can't click rest, which is the only thing that makes this thing a problem. So now I think I just go right back into Mr. Aloha. Actually, I don't know, man. I have two Pokemon chunked. I don't have an answer to Zapdos. This is early, but this might be the time to bring out Greatestness, honestly. Because what else am I going to do? My One of my two like sweep win conditions was Kayuma, which I already lost, and Greatestness. That Crocolor is a problem, man. If not for the Crocolor, I would just bring in Greatestness, and I think I could legit sweep this game right now. But that Crocolor is making it an issue. I don't know if I can break through it. I'm going to go Jesus here. I want to bring out Grace, Greatestness right here, but I can't. I don't think I can break the Crocolor. Is the problem. And now, as much as I want to Dragon Darts, he has Mimikyu. Do I just U-turn here? Is it I think Choice Bane U-turn kills from the spot. Phantom Force would hit pretty much anything on his team really well, though. I could click Phantom Force, and he could switch in who he wants, but something is going to take a huge chunk. I'm going to click Phantom Force. He switches. Um, Depending on what he brings. Oh my god, this is the Crocolor. This is bad. This is real bad. Because we're going to go Phantom Force. Um... We're going to do a could... Okay. Honestly, I kind of hope he attacks me with a Terra Blast. I think he's going to slack off. I kind of hope he attacks with a Terra Blast. We'll see. Phantom Force taking two turns is a bit rough here. But we should do a good chunk. We're max attack adamant with Choice Band. Like, this should do a good chunk of damage, even with the uh, Eviolite. Light. I am kind of wishing I U-turned here, though. I think the U-turn would have been a better play. I was I got greedy with the Phantom Force, hoping to deal a lot of damage to something. Because there's nothing that wants to take the hit. This is the only switch that he could have brought in that was good for him, though. So it was a good play by him. That's so much damage. If this thing slack off, slacks off, it Terror Blasts. But the problem is now we're Choice Locked into this. Do we live this? We do. Yeah, it's a chunk of damage though damn this crocolor is going crazy uh the fact that we're banded right now is rough i think we just have to go meeple he's gonna slack off i know he is this guy's smart enough he's gonna calc this he's gonna realize we're choice banned he's he's 100 gonna realize we're choice banned and locked in i'm gonna go mr aloha here actually how much damage did that phantom force do did i screw up here did it it did more than 50 percent didn't it i think i could have just phantom forced a second time he would have, yeah, he would have slacked off once. And I think Phantom Force would have killed Dude, but I think I could have killed him right there. Or he would have, he probably would have swapped out into something else. I should have just Phantom Force a second time. Why don't I do that? Um, I feel like I'm playing like shit right now. Do I just burn this thing or do I U-turn? This thing is not going to let, he's not going to let me knock this off. I want to knock the item off, but it's not, he's not going to let me. There's no way, because this thing becomes way less of a problem. Yep, I knew it. Okay, so he swaps out. I'm so glad I U-turned. I, I thought about going for knockoff here, and this is the perfect play because it's Glass Trier. It doesn't kill. He's going to take a little burn chip, which is fine. Um, man, why didn't I Phantom Force a second time? Well, he probably, to be fair, he would have just, he would have just done the play he just did, to be honest. So actually, I don't think it was a mistake not going for Phantom Force. I think it's perfectly fine. But now I need to go Greatest Ness because this thing can't hurt me. This thing is burnt. I think this is my one opportunity. If I go Jesus, I claim a kill, and then he just switches in, and I'm and I'm choice ban locked. I have to go Greatest Ness. This is my, this is my only chance here. I'm in a really rough spot. But if I go Greatest Ness here, I can at least set up. This burn is going to slowly take him out. Um. But this thing can't, this thing really can't hurt me with the burn. And so I think I just D dance here so that I'm faster than other things. He's obviously going to bring in the Crocolor at some point with the Unaware and the Eviolite, but I just have to hope that I can break through it. I think with a Rock Blast, there's a chance that I could do more than, more than 50% of that thing. I just have to D dance. I know the attack boost won't matter against a Crocolor, but the speed and the attack boost is important for everything else. So I have to do this right here and just pray that I can break the Crocolor. That's really it. If I if I can break the Crocolor, then I can win this win the game with this thing right here. So we get the D dance. We're gonna plus one attack, plus one speed. So we're ready to tear through everything else. He obviously stays in. He just wants to sack this thing. So he goes for close combat. Does about seventy. That's fine. So he's gonna take burn ship, and now do I go for a second one? I think so, right? Because I don't think I have a reason not to. Because then I guarantee that I outspeed everything, even if they're scarfed. 
Even if it's a Scarf Cinderace, we should outspeed with another Dragon Dance. So I do this to get plus two attack, plus two speed. This thing obviously can't kill me. And if it had rest, it obviously would have went for it already, right? So I think I D-dance a second time. All right, so I'm gonna D-dance here. So we're plus two attack, plus two speed, which normally would make me feel like we can win the game right now, but this damn two-point Pokemon on the other team is, is literally stopping us from sweeping right now. So close combat comes out. We're still at half health. Iron Thorns doing Iron Thorns things. So now we just attack and kill this thing because we don't want to take a third close combat. We don't want to get too low because there is still Sucker Punch on the side of Cinderace. Um, and right now we're healthy enough where we should be able to take one. I'm just going to click Rock Blast. Maybe I should have went for Stealth Rock here. Should I have went for Stealth Rock there to chip down the Crocolor? Oh, dude. I don't know. I don't know if I could have afforded it, though. Maybe I should have went for Rocks instead of a second Dragon Dance. I don't know. We're going to take out Ram 9, which feels uh, really bad. Shout out to Ram 9, my goat. Maybe I should have went for a Rocks here to cl to chip the Crocolore. Because really, do I need the second Dragon Dance? I don't know. I don't know if I needed it. I think I just need... That might have mm, that might have been a mistake. Because Crocolore's HP is what, like 80% right now? All right. So this thing with Eviolite, I have to just click Rock Blast and hope for the best. If I get a crit anywhere in this... I think I win. How much damage? Oh, that's a good chunk of damage. That's two hits. Give me five hits. Please give me five hits. I need to deal more than 50% because Slack Off is going to heal on 50. That, that was right around 50, I think. We got all five hits, which is huge. This thing is going to just keep trying to Slack Off through our Rock Blast. I think it healed for almost the exact same amount of damage we do. We just literally have to do this and pray for a crit. If we get a crit, I think we can win the game. It's a 1 in 16 chance every single time we attack. And we're guaranteed to hit four to five times. That's four. Give me a fifth. You have another fifth. Oh, it's so low, dude. I think we're doing more than 50% with five hits, but the, the problem is it's a 50-50 on four to five. We, we have to get a crit at some point, man. Please, just one crit. I, th I think maybe we need two, but I think one crit could, could end this game. One in 16 chance. We're going to have like 14 or 15 chances after the end of this one. Please give me one. This will be four. I, I need a fifth. We only got four attacks, dude. Oh, he's going to be... A... So he could run out of slack offs, though. He could run out of slack offs. We have 16 rock blasts. He should have 16 slack offs, but he slacked off, I think, twice before we did this. So I think we have one more rock blast than he has slack off. So we might be able to get through him. Come on, give me five. Give me, please give me... A... Oh, that's rough, dude. Man, he's going to be able to get through us here. The The only win con I have is that we should have one more Rock Blast and Slack Off. So if he does this forever, he will not be able to heal that final time. But I really need to get a, a, another five hitter. I need to keep this in, in range to where like an earthquake could take him out. Okay, we got five this time, but he is slowly healing up. We're going to play this game forever. Oh, he goes for Will Wisp. Oh, damn it. That's rough, dude. That makes it so our plus two attack is basically nothing against other mons. I don't know if we kill here. We have to pray this Rock Blast kills. If Rock Blast doesn't kill him here, that's it's game over for sure. I just have to pray we kill on this Rock Blast. Damn, dude. If we could have gotten a crit on one of those first two, we were doing more than his heal, I think, when we got five hits. Four hits is less than 50%, but five hits is more. And I feel like to hit whatever, like, 20, 25 times and not get a crit is kind of unlucky, to be completely honest with you. Two. I think we're going to need all five. That's three. Four does not kill. We need a fifth. Please, 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 please. Okay, thank God. Okay, so the crock hole is down at least, but now we're burnt, which means we're faster than everything, but we're basically neutral attack. Damn, that Will-O-Wisp was a good play. Nova's playing really well right now, dude. He's he's definitely outplaying me. So now I think he probably brings Cinderace in with the Sucker Punch, I would think. He might wait a turn to get, like, more Burn Chip on me. But I think we probably see the Cinderace here. He's thinking hard about this. He doesn't know who to bring in. He's only got three Mons left. He's got Cinderace, he's got Mimikyu, and he's got Zapdos. Honestly, the three Pokemon I was most worried about coming into this week. And that was before I even realized... Zapdos got freaking defiant. I don't know how I missed that. Whether I win or lose this game, I will make a promise. Um, 
I can't promise that I'll never like lose another game, but I can promise I will never lose another game because I didn't know what a Pokemon did. I've made this mistake a couple times now. And now I just Rock Blast this thing. We should live a Sucker Punch, I think, unless this thing's banded. He gets the Libero, he gets Dark type. 100 damage, okay. Rock Blast should do a ton though. Um, what? We, wait, what? How did we miss? Rock... Uh... I'm gonna Stealth Rock here. I didn't even know that Rock Blast could miss. I thought with Loaded Dice it was guaranteed. Well, that's tragic. I did not know that either. I was literally just talking about how things I don't know, and apparently Rock Blast can miss. I thought with Loaded Dice it was a guaranteed hit. So I'm Stealth Rocking here because Sucker Punch doesn't kill me unless I do an attacking move. Now, the pr thing is, do I save Greatestness for a sacrifice here? Because he's going to Sucker Punch me. He's not going to take the risk. Do I save Greatestness for a sacrifice, for a free switch for something else? Because I kind of think I have to. We have Stealth Rock up. We might be able to get some chip on the other bonds. I kind of think I go like Mr. Aloha here to intimidate this thing and save Greatestness for a sack. It's either that or I Rock blast, blast and then put something in for free after. It seems weird to save this thing on 8 HP, but I feel like keeping a sacrifice could be the right play. There's no way this thing doesn't Sucker Punch. This is a risk, but I think it's the right play. Because I, I can't attack this thing. It's going to beat me. Okay, we switch. F oh, wait. No, we're faster. So he could still s he could still switch. I think he Sucker Punched. I can't imagine he did anything else. Show me the Sucker Punch. All right, good. Okay, so that was the right call. So Greatestness is alive at age 8 HP. Obviously, it won't do anything, but it's a free sacrifice for later if I need to get something in cleanly. I could Will-O-Wisp here because this thing is dark type right now instead of instead of fire but i kind of think i just knock off here because and do i knock off because if, if zapdos comes in with the lumberry we could get rid of it and we could potentially burn it that might be one of the only situations we could could win this this game feels kind of doomed but maybe we can he's gonna switch he's not gonna keep this thing in he's gonna bring in the zapdos so do i knock it off to get rid of its lumberry or do i u-turn to get out Normally, I would just will to burn it, but I can't because it's going to it's gonna save it. I think I knock off here. He goes for Chord Change. Well, now I feel really freaking dumb for going to, for the Stealth Rock. I don't know why. I kind of thought this thing was just like... Man, I, I feel stupid. Now the Stealth Rock is hurting me instead of helping me. I should have really thought that through when I went through this. Any of you turns out. The Drain Punch is bad. Why didn't I go for Knock Off again? He is just hard out playing me, dude. Nova is taking me to freaking school. This is a close game. It feels like I'm getting crushed. That's kind of how it feels. Brain Punch is going to do next to nothing. And now I think we have to sack Greatestness here. I think this is where we sack Greatestness, right? This is why we kept him. Like, unless it goes for a bulk up, there's not much he can do that does much for him. I think we just put in Greatestness and let him die to the Stealth Rock and the Burn. And then we can free switch into Dragapult at least, so that he can deal some damage. Because he's not going to want to stay in with Zapdos on Dragapult. Because a switch into anybody else is really risky, because a Brave Bird would kill Jesus, and a close combat kills either Meeple or Incineroar. Most likely. I do kind of want to get rid of this thing's item, though. Do I just make a hard read here? This Incineroar is not doing anything for me. I kind of want to make a hard read here. I think he's going to Brave Bird. Let's go, dude. Oh my god, we live. We live. He takes a chunk. Knockoff's going to get rid of the item. And it takes a, a lot of damage. Okay, this thing is almost out of the way. Which, honestly, it's a huge problem for our, for our Umbreon. Maybe we can still win this, dude. Oh my god, I'm so glad I made that play. I almost just hard switch into Greatestness. And now I feel like, now I feel like we sack. Because we died any one hit now. Do we sack Greatestness now, or do we let Mr. Aloha die? And then go into Dragapult. Either way, our play is sacrificing something and going into Dragapult. I'm just deciding on which one I want to sack right now. I think I need to sack Greatestness. Because Mr. Aloha might be able to do something. Greatestness can't do anything because it, it dies to self rock immediately. So we're going to sack him. I don't think there's any way he switches. He does not because because he's faster, which means he stayed in. So we're going to sack Greatestness. We should get a free switch into Pult. So Greatestness is going to drop. I think he picked up two kills, I think. I want to say he picked up two kills. Yeah, because I think he picked up, he killed Glasher and Crocolor. Man, that damn Crocolor. Greatestness could have had another sweep. Well, we go to Jesus here now. Now, the question is, though, what, what we click when we go in. I really wish I wasn't Choice Bandit. If I wasn't Choice Bandit, I think we could win this game. 
We take stealth rock chip. Man, I feel stupid for setting up those rocks. Um, does a U-turn kill from here? I think it does. I think I have to U-turn because I don't think I can risk locking into anything else. The only thing, other thing I would go into is Phantom Force because Dragon Darts does nothing to the Mimikyu. Meeful just does not do much here in the end game though because they're all physical attackers. I need I need to save Meeful to break the disguise on Mimikyu. That's really the only thing that I have. I need to U-turn here. He swaps. Okay. That might be good. That might be good that he swaps. He goes in Mimikyu. We're going to break the disguise. Oh, that's so good. We break the disguise here. That's actually huge. This this game might not be over. This game might not be over because because now uh, a Phantom Force would kill this thing. If if somehow I can get into a spot to Phantom Force it, but it's going to have Shadow Sneak, which is a problem. And we're also taking Stealth Rock Chip. But now we go Mr. Aloha, I think. We go Mr. Aloha here, I think. Oh my god, I'm going to die to Stealth Rock. What am I doing? What am I doing, man? I could have went into Meeple there and saved Mr. Law for a sec. Oh, I'm so dumb with those rocks in. I should have went Meeple here. Why did I not go Meeple first? That was so dumb. Man, I've made so many mistakes in this fight. Um, I could have saved Aloha for a sec. Now I just click Yawn, I think. Because I can't really do much damage at all to this thing. I click Yawn. It goes for playoff, but our Babiri Berry's going to... Oh, he misses! Or Roselli Berry, not Babiri Berry. But he misses. That's actually huge. So Yawn's going to come in here. So he is going to swap. God, why did I not... I'm going to Snarl here. Hope he doesn't bring in Zapdos, but he probably does. Asagi. No, that's the uh, Cinderace. Okay. Cinderace won't... Or Snarl won't do much. Just a little bit of chip, but... That's fine. Special attack fall, the fall doesn't matter, obviously. And now I just yawn again. I think I just yawn pressure. It's going to U-turn. That's fine. We'll take a chunk from this, but we're going to be able to yawn the Mimikyu again. The only way we can win this game is putting the um, Mimikyu to sleep, I think. Dude, if I saved, if I saved Mr. Aloha, could I have won this? Ugh. <sighs> So the Yawn's going to come out. So the next turn, this thing will fall asleep. I think we just have to... S Do I heal? I think I heal. This thing's going to swap again. Yep. But now we might be in an endless loop with this, to be honest. He's going to bring this thing in again. If I had rocks up, I could win this game, but he court changed him. That was... Oh, that was so good by him, dude. I don't know why I did that. And now we yawn again, I think. Or do I snarl to get a chunk? He's going to predict me to yawn again. Because that's what I did last time. If he U-turns again, yawn is still the play. Just for... Oh, oh my gosh. He's... Dude, he's playing so well. This is the right play. Because now he does a chunk. And now he just gets to U-turn on this next turn. And he's going to kill and swap out for free. Uh, GG, Nova. This should be... This should be game, I think. I think the only way I can win this is on a crit. I think the only way I can win this is on a crit sucker punch on the Mimikyu. I'm going to go for Moonlight, but it doesn't matter. He's, he's going to kill with his U-turn. Yep. I think that kills. Yep, it does. That should be game. Um, We need a crit. We need a crit on sucker punch. That's it. That's the only way. Because we're now we're locked into one move. And the only move that we can win the game on is, is sucker punch. And honestly, I think he could PP stall me to the point where I run out of sucker punches. So I think this is game over. Uh, no matter what. But man, I, th I think we're going to lose 3-0 here. Dude, I honestly, I felt good about this game coming into it. And I did not expect the Crocolor. I somehow did not realize the Defiant was a thing on Zapdos. And Nova just outplayed me at every turn, dude. I made a couple of huge mistakes. I feel really silly. Um, I, I don't mind losing. Because th honestly, like this is a great learning experience. Because I learned a lot of things that I made mistakes on this week. I shouldn't say I lost. I could crit this Sucker Punch. If, if I crit, we can win. But I don't think so, because I think... We'll see. Yeah, no. That's not a crit, I don't think. He's going to kill with the Shadow Sneak. GG, Nova. Well played, dude. You you outplayed me the entire game. Um, I'm going to message him on Discord. Yeah, GG to Nova. Um, he played really, really well. I made a lot of mistakes this game. I set up the Quackle Ball before the Crocolor even came in. Completely didn't even think about the fact that he had unaware. Um, I didn't realize that Rock Blast could miss. I didn't realize that there was Defiant on the Zapdos. 
Um, and then I stealth rocked in front of a Cinderace who gets court changed. So honestly, like I made so many mistakes this game and I felt like it was still down to the wire. Um, I really like my team. I really like my roster. Even the additions that I made, the transactions this week, I think are long-term going to be really good for me. Um, but this was a great learning experience. For one, like I said before, um, I will not lose another fight because I didn't know what something did. Um, I can promise you that. I will make sure to make uh, that my prep is, is tip-top and that I will know what the hell to expect um, in the fights. Um, uh, huge congrats to Nova. Like I said, he he balled out. Like he just rolled me. He he outplayed me at every single turn. Um, he's a great guy, great player, and a huge congrats to him on this win. Obviously, it sucks to lose, but honestly, we're still in a pretty good chance, pretty good spot. We're two and two. I think we're plus five differential. We still have five more weeks to go. We can pick up a lot of wins, and I, I know that my team can do it. I believe in the team, and, and I know I can come up with some some wins but yeah it sucks um honestly the the biggest thing i'm frustrated about is that i didn't know that with loaded dice rock blast could miss um i think the real the thing about that the, re the reason i thought that it couldn't miss was because uh loaded dice and like the item text makes it, it says that it always hits four to five times um and most sets that people run loaded dice or moves like bullet seed which are typically 100 percent accuracy rock blast is 90. Uh, so I thought that it just made it that it was 100% accurate and obviously didn't. So, you know, honestly, uh, to learn this, it sucks it t to learn that that's the case. Um, and obviously, you know, everything I've already said, I don't mean to beat a dead horse here, but I would much rather learn this right now in week four of the regular season and then the playoffs. Um, that is what I will say. So that is going to be all for me today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And again, huge shout out to Nova. I highly encourage you guys to go check out his channel. He's an awesome guy. But until next time, until week five, where we will uh, do better. I promise you that. We'll catch you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.